waitresses? Same waitresses. That would have been great. I mean, the same kind. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know which one's worse. Yeah, I'm you. That's not even Mike a real Gerber. shirt. Yeah. yeah. So you've been in LA, you think that's a shirt. What do you mean I've been in LA? You've been in LA. You've been to LA. Look I've at been, you. Yes, I've been to LA. No, you've been spending time there, and that's why you're leaner, and you're wearing black, and you're grooming. No, I wore black when I was fat, and so all my stuff is black now. I'm not so fat. But no, people in London stretchy. don't wear shirts. So, it, so it's, it, it, it sort of hugged me. I can, do any, I can be any size in these clothes, because they're all stretch. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious, like, so you get an idea, and I know yeah. there's no real um, answer to this, but you get an idea. How long, on average, do you feel till it's done, till you go, that, I got that to where I wanted it? How long would you say? Like, well, I, the first month, you know it's not going to be as good as after six months. No, and it, there's a weird, almost fruit-like cycle to it because it gets ripe and then it starts rotting a little bit for me sometimes. Right. The people that write about comedy, and I know it's not their business, the, the critics, but they should understand what an act is. When I go to yeah. see somebody work, I don't want to see your new hour. I do. I want to see the act. See, this is this is the, What's the uh, this is the eternal argument between him and I that we've but been, yours yeah. we've been, the we've act. been having this discussion yeah. literally. Well, because what is it? I have the same feeling because I do. I throw away my act every year. I, I do. I yes, do a new so hour I. and I throw it away. I never. Uh, I never. Well, it's oh, a, right. Fine. Fine. Can we get some real no, comedians? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, every year I get rid of I don't know ten or twenty percent, and I add, and so I, so it's every five years or four years. I don't. I don't right. really keep track of it. Right. But I do feel like there are those core things. But you don't work like that. You like to create a show, I, and that's the show. I like a whole. But those two hundred show. shows you do. What did you say? 200 or 600? Two hundred or six hundred? About two hundred. Okay, so by the end of that, that's an act. That's an act, and that's ready for HBO if, right. they, if they want it. And uh, bye. But you must be coming up with stuff like all the time, yeah, and you, yeah. yeah. And do you, but you, so you gradually evolve the act. You do new stuff. Yeah, but yeah. So I like he, to keep evolving it. And like Jack Welch ran GE. Every year he fired the bottom 10. percent Right. That's the way. What's I do your it. oldest? How old is your oldest stuff? Like is it like sourdough I, bread that there's always no, a piece I, from? No, I 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, I've been doing sucks and great 10 years. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Do, I mean, I'm like I grew up Woody Allen, Prince. I like short geniuses. Every year Woody <laughs> Allen has a new movie. Every year Prince has a new album. Right. A, a well, that's why I look at it like you're writing, a, you're writing a book. Uh -huh. And that's the way I look at it. Like, but Jerry's point is that stuff. when you go and see Prince, you want to see his greatest hits, not his new album no, you haven't heard. No, no, not your... necessarily. I want to see both. Not necessarily. I want to see both. But I think if you leave maybe, out... Maybe today I want to see the hits, but there was a moment there from... There was a 20-year period in Prince's career where I just wanted the new shit. I couldn't wait for this. Well, you know what I always think? think is that if people if people come and see you, because there's you have, I have an ongoing relationship with my audience, I think, and I, a lot of people come back to see me. If if somebody right. sees you on TV doing a special and they see the stuff they love, and then they come see you live and they see it live, they'll actually be happy. Right. But they won't come back again. They'll go. I know what that guy does. If they come and see you live after the special and it's completely different. Yeah, I well, don't know. Then, that's that's another argument again. Chris and I have had. Are they coming to see you or are they coming to see the act? They're coming to see you. Well, yeah, they're they're absolutely so. coming also, to see of course, course. But this level, of course material. they are. They're, they're, they're not coming to, 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 to discuss the evolution of the, you know, the comedy. They're coming to see Jerry Seinfeld, aren't they? they, want a, they it's an event. Yeah, but them. I think Louis's right. If they see the exact same thing, then they won't come Those back again. Those people will not come again. Yeah. But well, also, the, the, the challenge of that, of like, there's a huge amount of pressure. People are coming, they paid a lot of money, they had to park and they got in a fight with their date or whatever it is. So there is a lot of you know, there, there's a huge challenge in not having your old act, but I think you rise to the occasion. You don't rise to the occasion if you don't put a, put the void there. Right. If you well, take away your old material from yourself, like one thing I started doing when I was developing hours is I'd take my closing bit and I'd open with it. Right. Just to fuck myself. Just right, Just because then right. I have to follow my strongest bit. That's how he got good. You see this attitude? I, and I, my you know, closing bit with guy. I've been watching him. Yeah. Well, because then the end of your act cauterizes it. It gets stronger right. just because you have because you don't have a choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> cauterizes. So Why I started doing that? You get take get rid of all your best weapons, and you have to, you know, or else you're you're dead. But don't you think right. sometimes so it brings something out? When we're you. discussing um, things like, oh, what do what do the audience expect, or what do they want? 
don't, there's something in me that says I don't care. It's not up to them. Uh, it's well, not yeah. up to them. I'll do exactly what I want, and that you know, then you come. Yeah. And, if you if you didn't like it, I I, I don't care. Yeah, that, don't that, come and see me again. Don't I, ever come and see me I again. I think as long as you're, I, I just don't want to be judged. Approach. I really don't want to be judged. Well, then you're in the wrong business. I completely. never to What be do you mean, though? Well, well, you're, why? You're going up there to be judged. No one is more judged in civilized society than a stand-up comedian. Every 12 seconds, you're rated. Yeah, that's right. But that's yeah, that's the feedback. That's what it gives you. That they yeah. laugh or they don't. What I mean is, I'm not entering a competition. This is not. I, I'm not entering a popularity contest. You, you are. You are. You are. In a, you, are in a, you are in a competition. No, I think. Well, no, Ricky, because yeah, no, but Ricky's no, got no. the right attitude as long as it works. In well, other words, it seems to be. In working. other words, he doesn't care. And that's funny to people, and that's making them laugh, Are so it's OK. Care. Artistically, you're not no, no, no. entering a competition. Yeah. A... You're absolutely right, and you should write for yourself, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But when you play Radio City Music Hall or Madison Square Garden or whatever, you're competing with Led Zeppelin that was there the night before, or, or Prince, or well, whatever. Well, you're competing like, with you, something. You're competing with... To get sell those tickets. I mean, you, you have to get to a level to sell a certain number of tickets. I every mean, every room come. you're in, you're competing with the people that played that room, and you have to be at least as good as the other people what that I played mean that is, room. What yeah, I mean is, I don't, I don't change that? anything that I wouldn't want to do or has ever done. <laughs> to find an audience, I do what I do, oh, and somewhere oh. in the world, there's enough people that want to come and fill that venue. Absolutely. That's that. exactly right. It's like Darwinist, really. Because you have your thing that you do, and then people flock to it. And if you don't, if they don't, they don't, and then you exactly. die. Remember the first time you met a, another kid that was funny? Yeah. That was a big it's deal. Was a, so it's a big deal. I was in yeah. third grade, and I met a kid that was funny. And what was man, his name, do you remember? Jimmy Tenney. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Tenney. And we started making each other laugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't you remember kids that were like really funny, funnier than you? Oh, way funnier. Oh, yeah, and sure. then you go off and you make this whole <laughs> career out of it, and they're going, fuck, I could have yeah. done yeah. that. Well, yeah. there's, you know, there's guys that beat Jordan bas in basketball. <laughs> but you were, but I assume. <laughs> you're out there. Yeah. You were always I mean, funny, I'm, weren't you? Yeah. I mean, I was, always, I was always trying I to be funny. I thought everybody was funny. I only, like you said, I only hung out with the funny kids. Yeah. But my family were funny, all the friends, but that was the important thing. Yeah. When yeah. I grew up, right. if it, once you'd paid your way, the point was to have a laugh, mm -hmm. and that was usually, you know, you know, ribbing people. You know, sort I of ran play into fighting. one of my. One, there was a kid named Colin Ryan I went to junior high school with, and my first day of junior high school, you're it's a very scary step junior, from yeah. elementary school, uh, you know, from being like eating a lunch with a milk in the class, and then you're taking a shower with a bunch of kids, <laughs> like first day of junior high school, and I'm in the shower and I'm terrified and I don't know anybody, and then this kid next to me. Point like he just points and shows me that he's peeing on the kid next to him, who has no idea who's just wow. showering, he's wow. peeing all over him, and I just died laughing. <laughs> and he made me laugh that way a million times. And then I went to my high school reunion, and he was just kind of depressed-looking guy right, now. Right. And I told him that story, and I could see that the glimmer oh. was a little faded. But then he said, you know, somewhere that kid is walking around. He is, still doesn't know I peed on him. <laughs> I don't know what he does for a living, but he it's not pees comedy. on people still. <laughs> still Louis, <pees> Louis <laughs> C.K. said this was really funny. Yeah. Is it funny? It's not funny right. now. <laughs> I love jokes so much. I know. I I love them so much that if I if I love like that's why I do your act. <laughs> I love that joke. I never you know the walk around. You want to do, do the joke? Which one? The, the walk about the, the, the vacation. You're making me do my acts in front of those. Uh, I'll do the talk in, in front of yeah. Yeah. In front of yeah, you do it. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll do, do it. I'll do it. This is Jerry Seinfeld doing Louis do C.K. Right. Okay. So I'm going on my vacation with my wife, my family. We pack up the car and the kids, and I'm clicking in the car seats, and I put the wife in, and I get everything set. And it's such, it's so much work to get a family in a car. I close the door for my wife on the passenger side. I walk around to the driver's side. That's my vacation. <laughs> yeah. Is that how it goes? Something that's total. That's a, a completely Seinfelded <laughs> version. Really? I mean, you really polished it up. You did made it really? nice. You made it nice. Okay. Yeah. So now, just to finish the point, I yeah. love that joke. Mm -hmm. It's a. It's a. But you made it like a joke. You made it like a joke. Well, I heard it was his. Bit. His is like his life's falling apart. That's but he the doesn't want. Really, oh, you've heard him do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just, I, I I just wanted to see you do it. Now, <laughs> no, the thing is no. so interesting. <laughs> 
No, because I, when I do it, I'm sputtering through it. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and, and it, sweaty anger and energy. But you turned it into a really nice, beautifully crafted And you could bit. see that you could see the moves and everything. Yeah. It was clean. With exactly. Lou, you don't know. You don't even know the joke's coming. Then, when Louis did it, I didn't think that's a joke. I right. just thought this is a man falling apart for my pleasure. You're like my. This is a my man. This is a man. This is a man spilling his heart out, telling me what a bad day he's had, and it's hilarious. But it's, well, it's he's really free weird. He's to do what he wants. I don't care. No, I know, but I, I do that as well. I sort of disguise jokes. I don't. I don't think. Oh, I'm, really? I don't think I make jokes. I think of a joke yeah, as the I minimum just, amount of words I to get to a punchline. I think you do both at the same time. I think you try to. I, I try to make it seem like. I'm just getting this out, but I know all the moves. I know every little piece of it. How but it still needs a joke under. That, I mean, that's yeah. the problem with so People many, have so many these young guys. They think it's all attitude and all. No, yeah, no, but you got to work it, on it. It's got to have jokes under, well, under this weird persona, under you your crazy glasses, yeah. no, you under your it. crazy voice. Yeah. It would Whatever be a, gimmick you have, it the has to Well, there's like a difference. It has to have. Yes. Henny Youngman has to have something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. You can put all kind of furniture, but you got to have steel in the walls. Yeah. <laughs> when I was like 19 or 20, I, I got to open for Jerry at uh, the Paradise in Boston. Uh, this is before you right. had your show. It's the first time I opened for you. Right. It was a big club. It was like a, it was a, a rock club that they did comedy with bigger acts. Right. And I got to open for you. And uh, you got mad at me because I said, oh. I introduced you and said, he's the best comedian in the world. And you did your set, and it must have never left your brain because the second you got off stage, you found me and said, don't fucking put pressure on a person like that. You don't say that when you bring somebody on stage. Really? It's a stupid thing. It must have been the, your whole actor thinking that fucking kid fucked me. I did. <laughs> you know, so. But that's that not. Idea. I know, but Tom Papa did the same thing to me about three months ago. Yeah. And I went right in the toilet at a benefit. You know, it's not, it's, it was dumb. You, I, the audience just went, oh, really? I know. And, and it was yeah. over. I was 19 years old. But anyway, so you could have, you were mistake. me. But anyway, but then he invited me to do a bunch of shows uh, with him. So we did uh, uh, some big theaters. And I had never done big theaters. And uh, people applaud jokes in big theaters. And they did then. They don't, applause breaks were such an 80s thing. And right. uh, so I would, I'm opening for Jerry in front of like 1,200 or 20, 2,500 people, and people are applauding bits, and I had never encountered that, and I didn't know how to handle it. <laughs> Just standing there waiting for people to stop I know. applauding. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 do I bow or do I say thank you? <laughs> so I asked Jerry what to do, and he said, You stay in the bit. You stay in the bit that they're reacting to. You don't go, Hey, people, <laughs> people are applauding. If you're angry and that's why they're applauding, you stay in that energy. Yeah. Or if you're perplexed, you stay, you keep, and then by the way, it length, it, it keeps them excited about it and yeah. it keeps them, and that changed a lot for me. It made me I, think I've, more about the way I was I already knew that. being as a person. <laughs> <laughs> they teach that in the you, you do yeah. that too if they moan or boo or they get upset, you just stay in it yeah, and you just let them rest with peace. They teach that in pre K and they yeah, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. no one taught me it. I sort of knew stay that. Stay in the bit, children. That was genetic. <laughs> that was genetic. Yes. I had that. I come from a long line of people that stay in right. the bit. It's just an evolution. <laughs> but we we also do you think we've got a thing? I don't think I've got a thing. Like Chris has got black, but you know, <laughs> He's rich, oh, educated. Him, he's hardly, oh, he's hardly oh, fucking Kunta yeah. Kinta, is he? Do you know what I mean? Boy, did I lock up the bed. Yeah. Oh, boy. Woo. You've got, you oh, your God. Jewish doesn't count. You, no. You know, no, I don't no. use that. No, I know. No, I know. But it's in there. It's in there. Oh, yeah. You pull it out yeah. from time it's to time. It's a gear you, you go and you slip into once in a while. It's in the DNA. Do you think you have to have a thing? Have you got, you know, I think you... You got to... Figure something out. You've got to have a voice. You've got you to gotta, have a voice. Yeah, that's what a, a voice. Uh, thinking about our acts, that's what we do is take a subject and just don't leave it alone until there's nothing right. left of it. I think you're. You know, for thing. you, it's like whatever. If it's soap or shampoo, you're going to put the shampoo bottle there right. and just poke at it and bludge <laughs> it. If there's it, something about it that be... initially got you, <clears throat> yes. that you go, there's something there. And then for Chris, and Chris does it in a way that's even more blatant because he'll even keep repeating. If the premise is, you know, women can't uh, live without money or whatever it is, your all your chauvinist bullshit things yeah. that you say, <laughs> you'll see the keep sexist, repeating right? it over and over it's again. Black, women, sexist, women, <laughs> can't, <laughs> women can't go down in lifestyle. Women can't go down in lifestyle. That's his thing. So he said it to you too. <laughs> women can't go down in lifestyle. Then he'll explain it from 50 angles and he'll say, women can't go down well, in lifestyle. They can't. 
They can't go down. And then he'll yeah, explain, but he explain, has explain. to do that because that's a, a richer idea than they're used to hearing from a comedian. That's right. So he has to teach them. Oh, I think he's doing the right thing. Yeah. But that's, yeah. And a lot of comedians have great jokes, and they don't like, why isn't this working? It's not working because the audience does not understand the premise. Right. That's right. So I just, like, I'm going to make sure the important, if I set this premise up right, this joke will always work. Mm -hmm. But if I kind of go namby-pamby about setting up the premise. One of my favorite bits is, is that when r r white people are rich, they're just rich forever and ever. Even their <laughs> kids are rich. Yeah. But when a black guy gets rich, it's count down to when he's poor again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's he's the crazy. blackest white guy I well, fucking know. And, I'm, and then all the, the negative things we think about black people, this fucker. You're saying I'm a nigger. Yes, you are the niggerest fucking white man. <laughs> I have ever. <laughs> oh, oh, amazing! I, I don't think he he could do that. Oh, what? Uh, I don't oh. think he has those There's qualities. There's only two. You I, never I, I mean, that I'm no, not. you don't even understand. Really? You don't you don't really know him. Like I've worked with him. No, like you're been no. about. Uh, no. I wouldn't use it anywhere. No, exactly. These two. These two. We use say that nigger on stage. On stage. <laughs> You guys don't. That's a, yeah. It's an yeah, that's the two difference. teams that's here. That's the difference yeah, between. Like yeah. This. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We, we can say nigger on stage. You guys ways, don't. But that's definitely a pairing. Who, who we says say, nigger on stage? We don't. Well, you just you, did. Yeah, that's right. He, uh, yeah. Okay. You and me say no, nigger no, in not, private. No. no. These two guys. <laughs> <laughs> these two guys don't. I don't believe he says it in private. I'm much. giving it up just because it's played. I don't believe it's. I don't think you've ever said it probably in your life. No. 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 Yeah, that's it. That's that, the huge difference between you and me, I think. Well, you found the humor of it. Yeah. I haven't found it. Right. Do nor do I seek it. Right. I mean, so, so I'm going to find a way. Find a way. Can I squeeze? Some you know what, though? I'll Jerry, all of a sudden, having a great nigger bit would be pretty amazing. Oh, yeah, it would it'd be. be amazing. Oh, it'd be amazing. amazing. Because he retired it. Yeah. He retired it. No, he in did. In 96. Yeah. I'm, I'm done with it. Yeah. Anytime you come even close to cursing, people, ooh, yeah. shit. Well, he, I had a conversation with you on the phone once where you said uh, you said the F word is like a, is like a Corvette. That's what you, you said. And I hung up and I thought, well, that did means... He say, did he say so the F word? Or he said the, the F word. It, he yeah. said it's like a Corvette. And I said later I thought, well, that's, that means it's fast and it's cool. It's a good, you know, it's got power and thrust to it. And then I thought, wait a minute, this guy grew up in Long Island and collected Porsches. Right. So, so to him, a Corvette is a piece of shit. <laughs> With a Chevy engine, it's a flashy bullshit car. That's and right. where I grew up, a, Cor a Corvette is an awesome car. That's right. And only that's fucking faggots from Long Island. Yeah, that's what Corvette. you bought. Red and, Corvette. And, and pussies from Long Island drew, drove a fucking yes, Porsche. Yes. Right. I didn't want nothing to yes. do with it. And when I met him, when so I started all... being more friendly with him, then, yeah. oh, I guess I got to get a Porsche. <laughs> yes. But this is really this, important. Yeah. Uh, really because really do you think that, uh, I, I think with comedy, there's. Just, it's not a rule of thumb, but I think you have to be the underdog. There's no place for being above the audience. And some people say, well, you know, your whole bucket. place is above. No, 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 no. That's it's Jerry's different. No, no. But wait. It's an illusion. Jeff, Jerry's different. Well, whether it's an illusion or not, it's he's different. You're and talking. That's what I, you're you're the only one in the room talking. You're all, yeah. that puts you above them. Period. But no, Jerry. Everyone shut up. Still... I'm going to talk. You don't need to say anything beyond that. But you don't go on stage <laughs> talking about. You don't go on stage talking about your success and your wealth and what I you do. do and what you, do you? Does, well, I, I do, but I do, I do it ironically. Do, I do it, 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 I do it ironic, like yeah. I'm better than people, but I'm playing that card, so I'm actually right. saying I'm not better than them. But I think comedy is about empathy. And do you think that you get away from it? Do you think you lose touch? Because, come on, you know, I don't we're, think it's we're about white... empathy. I think it's about... It's totally it, different with Jerry, I think. What are you talking about? You're different what, I do I... something different. Yeah, I think so. You do something different, yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. But no, I don't think he does. Why would that be ridiculous? No, no, I don't think he does. I think no, you're a singular a... comedian. You're I, different I, than other comedians. I disagree. I think he's more every man than us because I think he looks at things and he takes things that everyone worries about. I don't mean, mean that he's not every man. He's the purest observational comic here. He is the purest yes, observational comic out of all of us. And he does it in a way that nobody would. I I can't believe that I live that every day and I never put it just exactly in that precise. He's a virtuoso. He plays it like a violin. Oh, that's very sweet. I'm so glad I came. <laughs> um. Did you ever struggle and feel like you weren't good ever, even in the beginning? I mean, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that. You not too long. No, I was pretty lucky. It was a few months. The worst it ever was was I was hitting 500. I would have a good show and a bad show, and a good show and a bad show. And when is that? What what stage is that? Is that first starting out? First starting out, 21 years old. Yeah. So you were 21 and you started in New York. 
clubs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right away, your first show was a good or bad? Bad. Bad. You did five minutes, or right. was, and you sucked for five. Right. So what? What happened in your? I think that's a good question to ask all of you. What What happened between your first time? And the second, like, what made you well, go back? Well, all I had and, to do was do it once. Yeah. And I didn't, it, I, really success wasn't my objective. It was just I want to be one of those guys. Yeah. If I could be one of those guys, mm. I, I win everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter, money was not the thing. So once I stepped on there the first time, that's it. I'm now one of these guys. Right. I'm just going to keep doing this. And that was to, is that because you wanted to hang out with comedians or... I want, people I perceive wanted, you as being. You wanted that to be your identity. You wanted to be yeah, one of those people. Right, right. No, that's what I started in Boston, and I felt that there was these comedians. They were like this, like Olympus, this group yeah, of guys. Yeah. And I wanted to be one of them, and right. I didn't care if I sucked at it. That's right. That's that is just a very successful attitude. You yeah. just want to be one. Of them. <laughs> I did that, and it killed. And um, and I thought like this is something I'm capable of. Right, right. Um, what about you? Yeah. A bit. A bit that you thought, hey, I really have a. Th- I, wow. I came up with something. That, that's a real comedian bit. Oh, my God. A real comedian bit. Oh, God. I'm so uh, embarrassed. Uh, I did some horrible bit about uh, black porn and white porn. Uh-huh. That was a great I bit. That the bit. black porn. The girl had I a, still think about a that bullet bit. wound in her great, ass. <laughs> yes. It was a great stretch marks. <laughs> stretch marks. Yeah, and they looked like when you took a picture of the black girl, you didn't have her permission. Like, she was looking <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> and white porn, they're all airbrushed. And they're Here's beautiful. the thing I love about bits. This is why it is the comedian thing is different. Really good bits. Yeah. Go deep into your head mm-hmm. and keep coming back. Mm-hmm. I think I'm sure I I think about that bit honestly. Yeah. <laughs> once a month. Oh man. Because it was the first time, and this, and I apologize for how naive this sounds, that I realized, oh, black people live in a different world than white people. Yeah. I didn't really know that till I heard that bit. So their Playboy is different from our Playboy. Yeah. And they're not that thrilled with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're not that thrilled. And I didn't know any well, of that's that. That's the funny thrilled. bit. That's the funny bit as well, from your perspective, <laughs> that they're not that thrilled with it. So he's complaining your again. Right. So you're imposing this Jewishness. Right. Like, they're, they're, they're whining. They're whining about their culture. Oh, we do that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. That would have been a great bit, though, if you did that. Black people's porn yeah, exactly, is yeah. different than white porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and guess what? <laughs> They're not thrilled with it. <laughs> Bound, but down, down. Yeah, they're not thrilled with it. How can we help this boy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? But I we swear, have airbrush. I, I do think about that bit. Oh. It's and uh, unfortunately, the porn hasn't gotten much better. What was your first bit? Black, what was your first bit ever? Black porn still kind of sucks. My first bit that I thought that's a real bit was about the tramway between Manhattan and Roosevelt Island, 1976. The city was going bankrupt. I go, oh, that's great. They're putting up rides for us. Next mm-hmm. thing, you know the bit? Yes, I do. Next thing, I guess they'll be putting up a roller coaster through the ghetto. I couldn't figure that's out right. how to, what word wow, to use for I that. I saw that recently on YouTube. That is really? so And I it remember. was a time trip for me because Let you me said finish it. ghetto. I go, that'll be the first roller coaster where they scream on the flat part of the ride. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Right, Woo! 1976. Ghetto. But I didn't wow. know. I say Harlem. Maybe that'll be a problem. I don't know what to say. I said ghetto. That's weird because I caught ghetto as a, as a weird. I, why is he saying ghetto? Well, what could I say? I don't ghetto. know what to say. You're supposed to say the Where's ghetto. The ghetto? <laughs> it's the, the, the generic term. Can't <laughs> offend <laughs> anyone. Roller, Just, roller coasters right. through the ghetto. Make it econo- <laughs> well, that's it. You, <laughs> you, you made it economic. <laughs> Instead of rice, didn't you? That's yeah. what you're worried about, right. I presume. Yeah, because right. yeah. yeah, it could have been the Jewish ghetto and worse. Well, of course, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Just, sure. Could he meant poor, poor <laughs> dangerous. He was saying the poor, dangerous people. Yes, that's what he was saying. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, God. that's right. What was your first bit that you did on? I know it really well. Um, he wrote it last week. <laughs> no, it was, it was only a few, it was it was about um, I suppose two years before I became a comedian. I was on the radio, and it was a bit that I developed and always brought up. It was. Uh, uh, facts on the internet that I thought were spurious, and the animal facts were my favourite. So I go through, and, de- love, yeah. and I deconstruct the motive of the person that put it on there. Why is this? And is there, uh, you know, elephants have been caught swimming um, uh, two miles out off the coast of England, and I go caught swimming like it's illegal. What? <laughs> what are they doing wrong? And I, and I just, I, it was, it, I couldn't great. believe how easy it was to. 
personify animals. And that, then I felt guilty. I thought, this is almost cheating because it's instantly funny. You personify, you personify an animal. An animal. And, I, and I thought, oh. So and then I started worried about it's not just being funny. It's being proud of your stuff and doing things that other people couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And it started really screwing mm -hmm. with me. But just going out there and just being funny, that's another thing. Is that, are we allowed to just go out there and be funny? What does that mean? Well, it, it worries me. I, I feel that it's cheating just go out there. I, I think anyone can be funny. What? So, oh, oh, no. What are you talking about? Because I, I feel guilty about just being able to make people laugh. So I want to I wanna do oh, it with a Oh, you mean in a dive. social set, please? No, no, on stage. I want to think, I want to go, that wasn't just luck, he worked on that bit and I couldn't come up with that. Because I'm also conscious about comedians who go out there and they, they're anodyne and safe and they say things we could all think they and it works. They don't do very well. 20 minutes they do. in. No, they they feel after fucking stadiums. Yeah. They do do well. No, after they, people no. who don't know comedy. No, no, guys no, like no, that no, get no, to no. a, they get quickly to a place and right. they stay there. We're, right. we're, we're sort of elitist and we think that we know what's good and what's allowed, but there are comedians out there that can sell arenas around the country, particularly in Britain, and they go out there and they say, isn't it funny, you take an umbrella out and it doesn't rain, and yet the times, and people are going, yeah, it's yeah, true. But that's, that, that, that's, yeah, but they, that's, couldn't, they couldn't be laughing any harder. That's for a to year, To the point where I want to go, I'm not going on. Yeah, but Because they can't laugh anymore at that. Yeah, but there's also a level above that, because like when you follow guys like that, who get right to the easiest possible laugh and they get a huge laugh, you can still, when you go on stage, the, you can feel the people go, yeah, but this is now something. Yeah, and how many this is now something unfunny a lot better. comedians? Anybody can get hot, have a hot year, play this big place, that big place. Who the hell has ever sustained a career not being funny? Nobody. Yeah, you can't. Not being really, truly. Mm -hmm. This is when I finished the this, sitcom. It I wanted to be back in this role because one of the things that bothered me about acting is a lot of people just say they can do it and, and can. Certainly they There's can. There's nobody in this world that says they can do it no. and can't no, do it. No, it's like people that say uh, easy laughs yeah. or cheap laughs doesn't exist. No. Like no. people people say things about like like comedians that curse and comedians that don't curse. If you say, if you use fuck, you're getting an easy laugh. Let's see you go get a laugh with fuck so easily. <laughs> yeah. I'd, by the way, I don't mind if I'm getting a laugh on something that's like, I, I have certain things in my act. I have laughs that I get that are, I feel like I got a laugh somewhere that nobody's gotten a laugh before. I feel that way sometimes. Yeah. But then I get laughs where I'm like, this is a huge, broad, cheap laugh, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I really? don't Yeah, I don't mind that. I think, I think I'll do it. I'm gonna, I, do you know, I think, I think I'll do that, but I'll cut that for the DVD. Oh, I don't really? mind Just getting get it in the each energy? town. No, I like cut it. That. I, like I don't want it out there. I don't want it documented yeah. that I got a cheap laugh. If you get stand on stage and say it, and it works that big, then, then it's yours. And to cut it out because you're embarrassed, that, that's kind of not fair I, I to that I have to thing. justify it. I have to work on it. I have to, I have to give it something else. Th this is where I think that I'm judged. I let myself be judged. You. Th I, want, I want you guys to go. Well, let me tell you what that, impresses you know what I mean? me if you leave it in. That's what will impress me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's in. It's in. <laughs> yeah. Like when I've started to take put an hour together, when I get to the, like after I've written all this stuff and I start deciding what am I going to stop doing, there are bits that I got to through tech, technician work and through survival instinct that I don't believe in. I've had bits that kill and I get rid of them. There you go. Because, because I, I, I just realizing that, that but I've then had you that agree thought. With me. And I think, I think this bit. Two against two. This bit is. Two against two. <laughs> this bit is working because I know how to do stand up. It's not working because it's something that's important to me and, and uh, yeah. I don't need it. I don't I, need I it. I agree. And, and, or it's this is a laugh I've gotten before. The, now, I, I'll take stuff out of a special because eh, I covered that two right, specials covered, ago. Right. And, you know, but. Yeah, but just what he's saying, but just by virtue of the fact that, that it was he easy thinks it was easy. I don't want to do a thing that anyone in the I audience could do. I don't want to make jokes. Well, no, you that shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think. But again, I, we got to talk about the joke. But I don't, don't I think don't about to... us. I mean, I've never done a fart joke, but I've heard fart jokes that have made me laugh. Sure. Yeah, well, you choose your I've thing, never, of course. You know what I, mean? like, I don't even. I've never that. done a shit joke. You've made me cry with shit jokes. You know what I mean? So.
He's got a lot of shit jokes. I've got a lot of shit yeah, jokes. Yeah, he's got a lot of shit jokes. I, and I'll laugh. I've got about 10 you know? new minutes on shit. And oh. it's all throughout the act. It's not even like I a shit chunk. Adam Sandler. It's just that if you collect it all my oh, it's too too great. Great. There's a vein of shit. Through I can't get off of it. I've always said that. I can't get off of it. I saw Sandler fart on David Hasselhoff's head in a movie. It's the funniest, thing, the funniest in the world. thing in the world. <laughs> it was the funniest thing in the world. No, I am. This right, the stuff I laugh, I laugh at the <laughs> dumbest things. I laugh at the uh, Years and years ago, I saw a comic uh, in some horrible club bombing with a guitar. And he sang, uh, sitting on a cock because I'm gay. <laughs> and that's still, yeah, but you're, I will, I'm in the shower sitting and I just die. I can't laugh. But you're laughing laugh. ironically. It's the funniest thing I but ever heard in my life. you're laughing ironically. No, no. That, no. That is a, no. It's well, a, I did. I laughed ironically at you setting up this guy struggling and doing a tap. <laughs> no. I laughed ironically. No, it's true. I no. love his, I love Yes, you do. You're not him. laughing because that's a clever, funny line. It's, it's and the, you're the, laughing the, at the context. Why are you so upset? It's just funny. It's, it's <laughs> funny, but we're laughing at it. You gotta get off the No, 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 no. That is a pretty good joke. I respect it. It's a pretty good joke. You can only laugh at that. Because we're intelligent, educated people, knowing that you shouldn't go out and go sitting on a cock or some guy. You shouldn't do that. Would I be upset if Jerry Seinfeld did it? Yes, I might be upset. No, you know what? I'd probably laugh. That would be pretty good. Imagine that. Imagine you went to see Jerry and he said, he said, ladies and gentlemen, I've written a I've written a great song. I mean, maybe it's old. I've changed I've changed the words a little bit. Do you know? You don't set up a song parody like that. No, a song parody. (laughs) Fucking genius, Oscar Wilde. I like them all. A song fucking parody. I do parodies, ladies and gentlemen. You can't be the one who decides why you like something. It doesn't matter. I remember reading one time about Elaine Boozler talking about a bit Letterman did in '75 about toothpaste that he would spit into the sink and he would let it dry and he would serve it as after dinner mints when people would come <laughs> over. It's a stupid joke. And she said, I don't know why, but I think about that joke all the time. Yes. And I think about that joke too. Is it a great joke? Mm-hmm. No, but there's something in that joke. In the same way there's something in that. Yes. That you can't, that's yeah. all, the kill. all physical you, evidence you have, to yes. the no, contrary. Can... There's something in there. Yes, but I'll tell you it's the difference is, found a... he's built in the irony. The comedian is built in the irony of how mad and disgusting and funny that is. That comedian hasn't built in any irony. We built in the irony. We're laughing because we put irony onto it. No, it's a funny joke. I don't think so. I really think that we just love that bit. You just love a bit? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And do you worry about the industry? Do you worry about the business of comedy? Not right now. I mean, it goes up and down. It sh- seems it gets, to be pretty strong these days. Right now, it's yeah. doing pretty well. Yeah. It's, it's as strong as you are. What that drives me to do is continue doing the, what I think is selling my tickets, which is refreshing the act every year. Well, it's year. also nice that you know people out there, they can't wait to see you. And that, and yeah. that also, that's a responsibility, because you it certainly think... It's like you say, you know, people, they hire a babysitter, they have an argument, they've got to park the car, they spend whatever, you know, they've yeah, come going out to a comedian, 10, just, to a theatre is... But it's that's why I think there's a responsibility. I th- I, that's why it I say is, it. I better have something special to say. And I don't think it's just enough to do 60 minutes of them laughing because they can't take that with them, right? Whereas if you say something that's, that's interesting or resonates or that's different, they can take it with all the best bits you remember. It stayed with you for 20 years and it's the gift that keeps on giving. If you see someone Sitting that just does... Sitting on a car because I'm gay. <laughs> 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 that is now the best... It's been with me it's for 25 years now. <laughs> Oh. Never know. No, so now next time you're interviewed by is. Time magazine. You know, what's weird? You, you've <laughs> talked to me Probably about that. Bit. Yeah, I've told you about that bit years ago. <laughs> yeah. What he's saying is because he's gay, he has to sit on <laughs> some right. cock. Some and it cock, happens to cock. fit beautifully over the template of yeah. well, it's like sitting it's on the, the dog by the bed. the Otis Redding thought he was setting up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the yeah, last exactly. thing oh, he man. thought. No he was, I'm going to help right. some guy say do the lame gay joke That's right. yeah. by and, writing and, this song. Anderson Cooper's going to beat our ass. <laughs> he d- he <laughs> checked he check check with his wife. <laughs> Honey, is there anything they could change this? In a, no, there, no, no one could way. ever spoof I've that. Sitting on the and, dog of the bay. No. There's no There's, there's no, no way. way. Exactly. It's going to touch people. They're going to be moved. Yeah. <laughs> and it will never be used street. for anything else. Is he oh, sitting yeah. on the cock? <laughs> is he just sort of sitting on the cock? Yeah, because he's gay. Or is he... He's really sitting on the balls. He's sitting on the balls, but the cock yeah. is up, right up. But if you said sitting on some balls because the cock attached to them is inside of me because no. I'm gay, does not Otis Redding didn't Otis Redding would be laughing going, they can't make it scan. They, they no. haven't got it. Let's walk away. And no, they go, exactly. no, I've got it, Otis. Sitting on a cock because I'm gay. And then he stops. <laughs> doesn't need the rest well, of the where song. Where's he going? There's no place to go. He's there. I love bits <laughs> Does where he do the whistle? I love the... <laughs> Does he do the whistle? Oh, God. He 
does, and it's even higher pitched. Does he do the whistle? <laughs> Ah, oh, that's... Oh, man! Oh, oh, that's a good one. Fuck me. See? Duh. That's fuck why it was worth right. doing the whole right. bit. I have a question, because uh, uh, there's an interesting comparison here, which is that everybody here is filthy except for you. You're perfect. Really? You're perfectly clean. I mean, you well, never I don't curse. Know about perfect. Do you say shit on stage no. or asshole? No, no. So, so you why had you a perfect? fuck. Oh, well, we all did. No, no, yeah, you had no, a fuck in around, the old days, yeah. around 9-11 or something. Oh, that was yeah. it. Right, about right. the one tower or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the finger. So you've you've said the f word once on stage. No, I in the old when I was a kid, I I used to before I felt like I didn't want to. Really? Did, did it get laughs? Yeah. Well, but it was you cut it out because you were guilty. You felt guilty about it. You thought it was. I'll cheap. tell you what the bit was. Go on. Um, it was a Superman bit. Uh, and it was something about. Um, how inept the, this newspaper would have to be that these people, they don't even see the resemblance. These are journalists, you know? <laughs> and the glasses just completely disguises this guy. And then it was something about, meantime, two of them are stuck in a fucking cave every week, you know? And that was the bit. And then I said, well, let me see if it works without the word. Right. And I took the word out. Didn't work. And that's what bothered me. Okay, you didn't the like the rhythm of it and the edge of that. It needed yeah. that, but it's not about the swear word there. It's about you it's getting about the rhythm. No, it's about you getting worked up. Yeah, it's it, about it's about right. this guy is he means this. He's so annoyed. Right. The fucking cave. You're right. That's funny. That's contempt you're for right. the cave they're you're living right. in. You're right. If I if I was a good enough comedian in those days to change the joke, but it bothered me that it didn't work at all without the word. But I think the interesting thing there was is that they laughed at that because they saw. Your personality, uh, you are your anger. It's the, it's That's the what's... anger that makes it funny. And I, and I but love I that. I didn't know how to uh, um, supplant it with something else that would communicate the anger. I didn't know how to do that. But this is this is what Plus, I don't just, even know. You, I, I think we, we all do it a little bit, but you guys do it a lot, and you do it most of all. That you can be spl spluttering and spitting and saying the same thing over again, but because you're getting angrier, you're making me laugh harder. Because I'm laughing at you. I'm laughing at you in the situation, angry at this, and I believe you. I believe you're angry, and I think. Well, and I've had I've had different feelings about the word fuck. Like I made a rule for myself one year because I felt like I, I watched a show of mine and I was like, this is getting stupid. But it's all about context. It's isn't a way. It? It's it is a all about of, context. You know. No, it, to me, it's all about fear. It, it, when who you, do you fear? Who, who you, you, you fear. You're fearing this bit's not going to work. Yeah, stand up is unlike any other art form in that way that you you can do you like if you're a, a musician, you're going to be pretty exact every time you perform, but. You look back on shows and you go, I messed all that up. That was I. I had I was driven by fear and uh, instead of by. I mean, I think intention. we deal with fear more um, uh, viscerally than almost anyone. I mean, yeah. the, you you feel the audience's fear, your own fear. The whole show is about quelling fear. When and and that's what you're talking about. When you have a bit that you really are confident in and you know the end of it's really strong, and the audience feels your fear level go down, yep. and they relax, and they go, oh, he seems to be very confident in this one. Yep. And But what do you fear now, though, Jerry? What do you fear now? The same thing. What, though? What's that? That but they don't laugh? It's not going to work. It's not going to be but funny. If, uh, yeah. But hold on. Yeah. No, no, there's two different things there. The first something fear working, is... Something working isn't okay, something not being funny. There's two fears. Uh, the first fear is they're not going to pay attention. <laughs> and but they pay. That's the, pay actually, that's, that's the biggest for, fear. That's the black audience. It's bigger than... Not being funny. <laughs> if they pay attention and but they don't laugh, playing? it's still a show. Yeah. <laughs> Here's something I've never done in my entire career: what? a sound check. I do sound check every show. So do I. You know, it's I do really my sound smart. check when I walk out. There. I never do it. I do, I do a sound my first. That's why I tell them I go like this if I need more. Right. That's what I tell them. I'll do this if I need it in the monitors more. I'll go this if I need. I go it. You sound never check. sound check. I'm worried. I'm worried about if I have to. I do it. I just want to know where the stage is. I want to know if there's a pit. I want to. Yeah. I want to know the. A you know, the, I like getting totally surprised bit. by the room. I don't really? like. I don't like being. Surprised. I don't want any surprises. So I don't funny. want. I, I go. Is that going to be off that exit sign? Every right? show. I don't want anything. Any surprises. Way, I'm anything only there. puts me I off. I like it. I like the surprise. Because I didn't bring. Sound I checks fifteen minutes, but you got to go oh, no. there. I go yeah, there. I go. I, I also want to know. I also have this fear of not knowing where the fucking theater is. I'm, I'm in some limo with some guy I don't fucking know. What if he's kidnapping me? I'm like, <laughs> like, what if he's taking me to his fucking lair? His lair. 
Uh, what about, I think I think comedy. Well, when when you become comedians, though, isn't it isn't it to do with controlling a situation? It's like a relationship. Again, it's yeah. Here we go. You know, your your woman is with you because you assume she loves you because she's there every day, but you still have to work on her liking you in order for this yeah. to work right. as a relationship. Right. Yeah, an audience <laughs> will come and they're excited <laughs> that yeah. you're there. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. I want to do that by being myself. And of course, yes, I, you yes, know, yes, the metaphor sure. But you come. still have to give some course. effort. Oh, oh, oh you can't of course. just come You've home, hey, I pay the rent, like me. But I suppose, um, and that worried me. I think the reason I did stand up was I thought I hadn't earned my Spurs in a way. I mean, most comedians slog around for 15 right. years and they want to get a sitcom. I walked into the BBC with a thing I made and it was The Office. Right. And then after The Office, I thought, I should show that I can do this other thing, this stand up thing. I always ask to get asked this question, you must get asked it all the time Is there anything you shouldn't joke about? And I will say, No, there's nothing you shouldn't joke about. It depends what the joke it's is. It's not should, it's could. Well, can I, you? I don't yeah. think that there's a bad thing to talk about because I think that I agree. a great thing about comedy is taking people to places that they have fear and foreboding and, totally and, and making them laugh in that place. I Absolutely. think you help them. I also think that um, that there is that this this spate of people thinking that comedy is your conscience taking a day off. I ne my conscience never takes a day off. You've got to be able to justify it. You don't ever think it was a joke. It was a terrible thing and someone was hurt, but it was a joke. You don't think like that, do you? You don't think that comedy is the be-all and end-all of something, you still have a responsibility to not hurt an innocent person. No, I think that comedy is the be-all and end-all. Well, that's no, our, that, our job know. is to think that. We I used think. to have a, a, a rule on my old show. Is to think, our, our, our responsibility is to think that it's the be-all and end-all. It is the right. be-all and end-all, but we used to have role. a thing. We go, no, because then, you, about what then they you tell do. real racist jokes. You tell real... No, I wouldn't. I'm not... <laughs> you know, no, no, no. But I'm saying, if you think that, if you think that someone you'll get but a laugh, we think that's funny. Yeah, I'm black, remember? Yeah, yeah. I'm the yeah. blackest guy. I always guy say, knows. talk about what they do, not what they are. Of course. Right. Absolutely. Right. People That's do it. some crazy shit. You talk about the crazy shit, but if you think they are some, you know what I mean? Right. I, I don't know. You know yeah. that all, I it's a little yeah, harder. Yeah, of course. You of course. I, mean? I, that, yeah. I don't know how it all operates. Sometimes I don't like. I have said things on stage that I, if I take them just as statements, they're the worst things that any person could say. I used sure. to do, like, I don't know why it's always rape. I guess it's the worst thing ever. Yeah. But I used to do a joke that ended with a reference to rape and then while I was there I would say you know you should never rape anybody <laughs> unless you have a good reason like you want to fuck somebody and they won't let you <laughs> in which case what are you gonna do not fuck them that's, that's no solution you're gonna have to rape them that's and I used funny. to that bit used to kill and I've never gotten in trouble for it no one's ever written a no, thing but that's I can't clear believe you said you don't it. Mean it and it what's that but that's clear that you don't mean it. You're, yeah, you're I know, but I'm really just with saying it. Like, yeah. it's a, what's one where I'm like, I know I'm fine saying this. I don't feel bad saying it. And the audience, I've seen all kinds of people laugh at that joke. But it's justified. You can but justify it. I'm not sure it. why we're all okay with it, though. Because like, you can justify it. You can because justify that comedically. You, yeah. you, yeah. you know, you put it together that, nicely. And right. that, that's part of being famous. You right. can't, that's the kind of thing you kind of can't get away with. Not well, I didn't, no, it's not famous. That's that it is a dance well, step. Well, he just tap danced over six laser beams. Yeah. That's what we like about that joke. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. He didn't touch one laser beam. That's right. Yeah. I would never out people. I remember uh, what's his hey, name? Ricky Martin way? used to. You know, he's gay. Yeah. He came out. But I used to always watch comedians talk about his gayness before he came out right. on shows, and I think that was like the meanest shit in the world. Yeah. Now I had no problem saying La Vida Loca sucked. Of course. Right. You know what I mean? But to say yeah. that guy well, is... I like that song. But to say that he did was 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 going too far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's very exactly. funny, Ricky. So, so there are what they do... Not, actually, I like La Vida Loca, but you know what I mean. Like, I've got a song for him, actually. Do, it's a reworking of Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. <laughs> and I think <laughs> I think it'd be a great <laughs> singer. Sitting on the dock of the bay. Sitting on the cock of the bay. Probably. Ah, uh, with a Spanish horn, right? Yeah. yeah. Do, uh, how, uh, how long do you wait when you go out before you come back as an encore? I don't wait at all. I go, thanks very much, good you night. Don't want I come out clapping. and I go, they, got us, they must have stopped clapping. I go, hi, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. You I shouldn't give, wait. I get there about eight seconds. No, that's yeah, too I'm too long. nervous. Too I'm too, long. If they, I don't make them wait. Well, I don't, I come, I used to come back, I used to have the encore be an afterthought, like throw, you know, people used to yell out. Uh, it's the only time I would do old bits, people would yell out bits they want me to do and stuff. But now I, I actually close with, like I have a bit that I close with, but really the the really dynamite closing stuff is the encore. So, like I'll leave on something that's it's my third favorite bit. 
Right. Uh, and I then used... it feels like the encore is like, all right, I'll do a little more, and this, and then the encore is way better than anything I did. You're like a the band. Show. That's like what a band does. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, Mine's probably it's the riskiest really, bit. it really makes people really, really happy. But yeah. I can't risk people not asking for an encore. Of course. <laughs> like no. I can't do it because also... then it's a weak show. It's too short. <laughs> well, also, right. I've, I've I... left a bit. I like to think I've left a bit yeah. to last. I couldn't possibly do it at the beginning because they'd hate me. Right. But now, now, now I've won them over. They'll, I'll get away with this bit. That's the other thing. I don't do Not it. Not always. You don't, you don't, do, you don't do one? No, he doesn't do one. I do a do long one. ass show. And then you, then you go then home. Then I get the fuck out of there. But don't they think you're <laughs> going to come back? No. I mean, maybe they do. Do but you warn them? Do you say, I don't do encores? You know what? I've been doing it long enough. They well, get also, it. if the room. It's a long fucking show. How long do you do? do about an hour 40 last tour. I do it an hour 10. What do you do? About 90 minutes. Really? That's, that's, see, that's. that's they're That's both long to show. me. What do you do, Joey? 115, one... I do, yeah. I do, yeah. Somewhere in there, 110, 120. That's exactly, yeah. Wow. I... I'm not... I think this they're sick of me by that. I don't show. have the offers. You know, it's, it's true <laughs> what you're how, saying. This is how I actually make my money. <laughs> my... I've amassed my fortune <laughs> actually telling jokes, so... An extra 20 he does has made him very Yeah, well, this is like... Yeah. I've never... Ladies and gentlemen, I am not here on the side. But don't you ever think as well, when you say we make people have this feeling of laughter and they pay us money, what if they discover they can do it themselves? They, they can do it themselves. Yeah, but why are they paying us? They it's, can't do no, it as they, well. They can't they're, do it as we, well. We are a high-octane uh, version of it. We are, we're pros. We're drugs, in a yeah. sense. Want, they can play <laughs> touch football, too. I want to tell them they can do it themselves. <laughs> they, can play, they can watch each other play football. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> but... It's not like it doesn't, doesn't hurt the, it doesn't hurt the NFL. There's a no, lot no, of no. things that make you feel <laughs> yeah, good. The, the but NFL. cocaine's good every time. The yeah, guys that make yeah. money on the Super Bowl aren't going, if people play football in their backyard, they're not going to watch this anymore. But it's not like going <laughs> to a doctor okay. when you go, you know how it costs me to have my kid next time I'm doing it myself. Yeah. It's not like that. You know what I mean? You no. need to go to the doctor. You need to I bet out. you could, though. I bet that that's a lot of bullshit. I bet if, if we concentrate, like if it was considered a good idea, <laughs> you could train people to do surgery in their houses. Yeah. You'd have like a kitchen and you'd have like a little operating room. <laughs> my, laundry first, room. my first operation. Uh, yeah. There is and you just would take out. I bet I you, could, know, you I could go on the internet and get the fucking, just put, take out an appendix. I, I bet I could take out an appendix. I saw a park an 18-wheeler into a little space about a week that's ago. That's fucking amazing. And I said, you know what? I guarantee you there's fucking heart surgery that's not as hard as what this guy <laughs> just did. Yeah. <laughs> I stopped he and, fucking wheeled yeah. it in there, like whipped it in there. I quick. watched a guy go into a loading dock, a back. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I stopped and I said, that was amazing. <laughs> and then he did an encore. Yeah. yeah. And I stopped and I said, that was incredible. And he goes, what? And I said, that was beautiful. And he went, <laughs> like he didn't go, oh, thank you. He was like, yeah, no. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do some? Um, should, should we do some p f promos that we might wow. use or what not? What do you think? You care? Sure, yeah. Okay, one. For right there. Oh. Right two. <laughs> one two three. Oh. Hey, what's up? This is Chris Rock, and please join me and some of the greatest comedians in the world: Louis C.K., Jerry Seinfeld, and Ricky Gervais on HBO's Talking Shit with Funny People. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, your turn. Hi, I'm Jerry Seinfeld. Welcome to Talking Funny. We hope you'll join us. I'm with uh, Louis C.K., Chris Rock, and Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Is that how you say it? <laughs> Close enough. I'm Louis C.K. Uh, please join me and my guests, Chris Rock, Jerry Seinfeld, and Ricky Gervais as we talk about comedy and um, come. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais. Join me, Louis C.K., Chris Rock, and the funniest comedian in the oh, world, great. Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Not my words, his. <laughs> Only on HBO. <laughs> Come on, you gotta do one more, because so they don't can't use that. No, we are using that one. No, no, you can't. Uh, no, it, yeah, and it's gonna be... I'll, it's, I'll sue you. brother has got one like that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>